Welcome to Sibspot. Our stories today from Reddit are about malicious compliance. The first story featured is by Russian Anna B. My boyfriend gave himself an allergic reaction to get rid of his boss. Not my story, but my boyfriend's. He doesn't like writing, but we've been listening to a lot of Reddit stories, and this story came up. His family confirmed this happened, so it's not made up. When my boyfriend, Jake, was 19, he had a job at a smoothie shop. He worked with three other people and his boss, we'll call him Michael. Jake's one stipulation before getting his job was that he not work with peanut butter since he is allergic. He'll break out in hives, and if ingested, his throat will swell. Not bad enough for EpiPen, but bad enough to need Benadryl. At this job, they made protein balls, and it was made with peanut butter. One day during a rush, Jake was at the sink when Michael threw a big bowl of leftover peanut butter in the sink and told Jake to wash it. Jake argued and told him he can't touch it and that he'd have a breakout. Michael argued with him and told him to do it. So, Jake being the stubborn person he is, said, okay, fine. Roughly five minutes later, Jake's hands and arms were covered in hives. So once his arms had visible hives, he took a picture and sent it to the work group chat the owners were in saying, Can someone cover my shift? I'm a tad under the weather. With pictures of his hands. He walked out before anyone responded. Someone covered his shift and the owners came in with the girl who covered the rest of his shift to yell at Michael. The next day, the girl told Jake about Michael getting chewed out by the owners. The owners called Jake and apologized for what happened. Long story short, that along with stealing money from the registers and being creepy with the high school girls, Michael was fired. Jake quit shortly after, just because. For people commenting that it was stupid and allergic reactions get worse, yes, he's well aware. He was a spiteful teen with no sense of self-preservation, just pettiness. It's only slightly possible that he'd die. The owners liked him and gave him an espresso machine when he left, so he says it was worth it. No, he wouldn't and won't do it again. The guy could have literally filed a lawsuit. If this guy's issue was more severe, he could have died. Story two is by thrown down a staircase. One gift for birthday and Christmas? No problem. I love birthdays and have always loved celebrating them, both for myself and others. I love to give gifts as much as I love to receive them, but I was born in December, so it's always been an uphill battle getting people to celebrate mine, or separate it from the religious holidays happening that month. For me, it's not about the gift, but the principle. I've had several friendships where I was expected to help plan and pay for expensive gifts, dinners, trips, etc. for a spring or summer birthday only to be told what an inconvenience it was to have to do something for a December birthday. I've been called greedy, childish, and have even had people ask me why I can't just combine my birthday with someone else's to make it easier. It makes the friendship feel one-sided and makes me feel like an inconvenience. I don't get so upset about it anymore, but I do have some firm birthday rules. 1. You don't have to get me anything. But if you do, just pick one birthday or Christmas. Keep them separate. Two, whatever the agreement is, let's make it mutual. If no birthday gifts is the agreement, it should hold for all birthdays involved, not just the inconvenient ones in December. Well, a best friend and I recently got into an argument about it because she felt like I was being selfish for wanting two gifts in the same month. When I said we don't have to do birthdays, she insisted that she should get a separate gift for her birthday in March, because it's a different time of year. I pointed out that this was unfair, but she wouldn't hear it. I jokingly said at the end, if she gave me one gift for the month, I would purposefully wait until March and give her an empty box for her birthday. She said, sure, go for it. And, as promised, she gave me one gift for both days and told me to stop being so childish. So March comes around and she has a little get-together, and the time comes to open gifts. When she unwrapped mine, she saw that it was empty. I said, Merry Christmas, and she got really upset. She said I was being petty and childish and that I was going out of my way to ruin her birthday. 
The other guests seemed really upset too, and for some of our mutual friends, they want me to apologize. I am refusing to do so, and we haven't spoken since. I think their rules are pretty sound, honestly. Like one gift or no gifts. Don't expect two different gifts because you want a Christmas gift and your birthday happens half a year later. That's not okay. Story number three is by Henrob6327. Not allowed to use the phone at the desk? This one is based on an experience my wife had at a previous job around 12 years ago. My wife, girlfriend at the time, worked for a small IT recruitment company as a recruiter. The offices were quite small, situated on the first floor of an office block with no balcony or kitchen, or any place to really take a proper lunch break. So my wife just sat at her desk during her allocated tea and lunch breaks and browsed her phone. Her PC was locked from accessing any websites such as Facebook and such. She found out that she was reported several times for being on her phone at her desk, something that was not allowed while working but argued that she was on her lunch break and she was not working and could be on her phone. She was then told that she cannot be on her phone at her desk as her colleagues can't know when she's on a break. She argued that there was nowhere to go for breaks except downstairs and outside, a place where the smokers take regular breaks. But nope, she was not allowed on her phone at her desk. So from that day on, whenever the group of smokers took a break, she would go downstairs and stand with them, browse on her phone, and come up with them. This meant that she took breaks as frequently as the smokers did, and she was away from her desk far more than she was taking her previous breaks for. It's small, but she felt a little victory inside. Luckily, she didn't stay in that job long. What a silly rule to implement. You shouldn't be able to dictate what people can or cannot do when they're on break as long as it's not disturbing anyone. The other employees griping about it can mind their own business. Our last story is by Material Egg 7428 Oh, I'm not allowed to clean up early? Have it your way. I am a master student who works as a teaching assistant for a class of 60 students. It is a lab course, so there is a ton of setup and cleanup. I usually end up working an extra hour or two past the end of lab, which I get paid for, but it does mean I go home really late. So I started tidying up once most of the students were gone. There is another TA and the professor to answer questions. I did this for a few weeks until I missed a student's question. The prof yelled at me and embarrassed me in front of the student for not doing my job. The other TA was on his phone, and the professor was standing at the front not doing anything. He told me to absolutely not clean up until all the students were gone. We had one student that always stayed over an hour later than everyone else. The next week, the student was the only one in the lab for over an hour past the end of lab. The other TA was helping them. I stood there, not lifting a finger, until she left. I took my time tidying up. The other TA is useless and was barely helping. Two hours passed, now 9 p.m. The lab was barely cleaned up. The professor started panicking, saying he still has to write lectures, do his own experiments, and then have an hour drive home. He had to help clean up. I did the same thing the next week, and the professor went to full-on panic attack. He told me that I could clean up early next week. I told him that, unfortunately, the extra hours I put into cleaning for the last two weeks used up all my hours for the semester, so I wouldn't be in. I heard that the next week was an absolute show, and the other TA complained that they were there almost until midnight. I used to be a teaching assistant as well, and I remember working with some great teachers and one or two bad ones in my years on the job. I'll never forget this one lady that was nasty to students just for asking to use the restroom. She would embarrass them by going completely silent and sitting there for 20 plus seconds looking angry if they raised their hand during a lesson and asked to go. She'd let them go, but sit in silence and wait until they left the room to continue. I loathed being in that class with her, but helped the kids as much as I could. She was an awful teacher. My mom always told me as a child, if I had to go and a teacher said no, just get up and go. What's the worst they can do to you? Nothing. Detention? Who cares? They can't hurt you, and respect is a two-way street. They aren't God. We've come to the end of the episode for today. If you enjoyed, 
Click the like button, leave a comment. It helps other people find their way here. I appreciate you all. Until we meet again, have a splendid day.